Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Mango Pi MQ Pro. This is a low-cost single-board computer with a Raspberry Pi Zero form factor and a RISC-V system on the chip. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Mango Pi MQ Pro, which cost me $26.99 from AliExpress. And as we can see on the label, this board has got one gigabyte of memory, although there's also a 512 megabyte RAM version available for $22.61. So let's get inside. It's a simple unboxing. We just unclip like that. The board is springing out in its anti-static bag. And uh, under here, we seem to have a uh, wireless antenna. We've got, I think, some stickers. Those look like down there, Mango Pie stickers. This is clearly a GPIO header. We can solder on if we wish. So uh, let's go back to the board itself, get it out of its anti-static bag. Looks to be nice and straightforward. It's resealable. We just go straight in, crinkle, crinkle. And uh, there we are. This is the Mango Pi MQ Pro. And this has to be the first SBC I've ever reviewed with a pink PCB. It's very distinctive. It's very unusual, isn't it? So uh, let's bring in something that isn't quite as unusual. Let's bring in a Raspberry Pi 0W like that. So we can see that very clearly the Mango Pi MQ Pro has got exactly the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi Zero, or indeed as here, a Zero W. However, the uh, Raspberry Pi board here, like all Raspberry Pi boards, has got an ARM system on the chip, whereas the Mango Pi MQ Pro is a RISC-V single board computer. Specifically, it's based on an all-wither D1 system on the chip, which is the chip right there. And this is a system on a chip I have looked at on other boards on the channel previously, or at least one other board, which was a, this board here. This is the, the Cypede Neza, where we can see the all-winner D1 down there. Anyway, let's go back to the Mango Pi MQ Pro, and it's a D1 chip down there, which is based on a single-core 1 GHz T-head C906 CPU. And it's also got a G2D 2D graphics accelerator. Flanking the D1 on the top of the Mango Pi, we also find a microSD card slot and a wireless module, which offers 802.11bg and N Wi-Fi, as well as Bluetooth 4.2. And down here, there's a related connector for the wireless antenna we saw earlier. Also on the front edge of the board, if we push it along like this, we can see its HDMI connector, which appears to be gold-plated. And even if it isn't, it's most certainly a mini HDMI connector rather than micro, so far more robust than the connectors we get on many SBCs these days. And the output of this socket is rated at 1080p at 60 frames a second or 4K at 30 frames a second. Although, given the CPU and RAM specifications of this board, I would very much treat the Mango Pi MQ Pro as a 1080p SBC. If we move along in the other direction, we find two USB-C connectors, one of which is labelled as OTG, and this is used to power the board or for USB 2 data connectivity. And then the other connector is labelled as host, and this is definitely for a USB 2 speed data connection. Finally, on the top of the board, right at the end, we have a camera interface in the form of a 24-pin DVP RGM2 connector. And if you're wondering, DVP refers to the digital video port specification created by Infinite Reality, whilst RGM2 is a reduced gigabit media independent interface. If we turn the board over, it sure it won't mind for a second like that, we can see that underneath we've got our one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM, and we've also got another connector. This is labeled DSI and CTP, and this is for hooking up an LCD touchscreen or other form of flat panel display. And so there we are, the Mango Pi MQ Pro, a very small and reasonably priced RISC-V SBC. And so I think it's now time to find out what kind of software support is currently available. Right, 
I've now connected up HDMI, the wireless antenna, power, and to the single USB-C port, I plugged in an adapter, which is connected to a Raspberry Pi keyboard and mouse. So let's turn on the power. And if we now cut across to the HDMI output, you can see we're booting up Linux. Specifically, we're booting up a version of Ambien with an XFCE desktop. And given that we're running this on a computer with a one gigahertz single core processor and one gigabyte of RAM, as I'm sure you would guess, this is going to take a while to boot. So whilst it gets on with its stuff, I thought I'd let you know I've been testing out various images available for the Mango Pi MQ Pro. Some haven't booted at all. Some have given me strange results like we can see here. I think this was a version of Deep in OS for the board. It probably works fine with, say, an LCD panel or accessed headlessly, but it didn't work for me over HDMI. And I've also tested out very successfully Ubuntu Server. And if you are going to try this out on the board, you have to connect to the internet during first boot, which I achieved using a USB to Ethernet adapter. And with that in place, the first boot was fine. And as I said, this worked very well indeed and continues to prove that Ubuntu is getting good support on RISC V. Anyway, we can now log in here in Ambient, so I will do that. And here we are running Ambient with an XFCE desktop on this single core low cost RISC V SBC. I find this very exciting. If we look in applications, you'll see that it's slightly sluggish, we would expect that. A Raspberry Pi Zero is also slightly sluggish, but uh, things do work. Let's bring up, for example, the file manager, and it'll come up. We have to will it to do so. Come on, you can show us what you can do. There we are. I'll leave most of this in real time so you can see how things perform, but it, it is working, isn't it? It's rather good. And what else we got here? They've got quite a few things pre-installed. There's a mail reader. We'll come back to a web browser. Loads of settings here in XFCE in Ambient various accessories as well, various development tools. Nice to see a genie down there. Um, graphics, we've got GIMP pre-installed. Fancy that. I'm going to try that out in the next section of the video. But we've also got Inkscape. I've never run Inkscape on a RISC V platform before, so we'll try that. And uh, whilst it's coming up, it's worth pointing out this is almost certainly the most stable desktop distro I've tried yet on a RISC V SBC. And this is my fourth RISC-V SBC I've tested out. And this is good news, isn't it? RISC-V is going to get there on the desktop. It's just going to take a bit of time as developers get the chance to experiment with hardware like this. And talking of taking a bit of time, Inkscape is also taking a little bit. But it's just getting there now, isn't it? Come on. Yes, there we are. We're running Inkscape. I think that's really cool. I think it's, it's amazing. We're on a completely new ISA and it's giving us desktop performance. I'm sure some people are saying, Chris, it's not a new ISA. I know it's been around for a while, but it's new, it's new to desktop computing. What else have we got here? Various uh, internet tools you can see, multimedia stuff. There's quite a lot of stuff pre-installed. We don't have an office package, but I'm sure we can live without that. or We could install one if we wanted to. We have got though a system profiler and benchmark. Let's just bring that up, see if it tells us anything exciting. Hopefully it will. There we are, it's uh, telling us exciting things. Let's just move it around and uh, rescale it a bit. This isn't bad, this is working okay. There we are, we've got our operating system. We see we've got our single core processor, our memory, etc. Can we learn more about the processor? I think we probably can. Yes, this is cool. This is, is very cool indeed. Let's just continue down in system, see what else is here. Let's launch, for example, XFCE terminal. There we go. Always good to run up the terminal. And I think with the terminal open, let's try running HTOP, see what's going on on the system. There we are. We can see we've got our uh, gigabyte of memory, about half used here. Everything seems to be going on OK, so we'll uh, leave that for now. It's just nice to look around, isn't it? See how stable the thing is. And it seems to be very stable indeed. So let's try some really tricky stuff, which is probably unfair, but we'll try it anyway. Let's go to the file manager and we'll find some video clips to play. And uh, here we are. Come on, give us a file manager. It has. We'll go to videos. 
and in here I've put some videos, same video in different resolutions as you can see, and as you're about to discover, video playback is not spectacular. Let's play that 480p video file. And there we are, it's coming up. And it's gonna, it's gonna struggle with this, I think. This is the Explaining Computers title sequence. But it hasn't, hasn't started playing it very much yet, has it? This is not a board to play video on, I don't think. This is a board for doing lots of other things. Largely things that don't involve running a desktop operating system, really, but in a video, it's nice to try one out, isn't it? And it gives us an idea of where Rovers 5 is headed. But as you can see, the titles are playing rather slowly here. I don't think we're going to be trying the 720p and 1080p clips because it's not worth it, isn't it? But we, we can play a video just about very slowly. If you were interested in inspecting every frame in a video, this would be perfect, wouldn't it? But uh, in other circumstances, I don't think so. And uh, the final thing we should check out, of course, is web performance. Can we get online? And the answer is we can get online. We've got a, a working browser here, so we can uh, run it up and have a look. I think it's called Dillo, the Dillo web browser. There we are, it comes up. This is a very straightforward web browser, shall we say. So let's try to go to some pages. Let's try to go to uh, explainingcomputers.com, if I can uh, spell it correctly. I'll soon find out. Did I spell it correctly? Yes, it seems I did. And it's coming in slightly slowly, but it is coming in. There we are, you see, we could uh, use it. A few years ago, we'd have marveled at all this, wouldn't it? It's just that today we have such high expectation. And shall we also try to go to its own web page? And here it is arriving. Oh, something's happened to that graphic, never mind. But uh, things are loading in. Can we see stuff? Yes, oh look, there's pictures of itself. It's always good when a computer can load in its own web page. And so there we are. This is Armbian with XFCE running on the Mango Pi MQ Pro, which in my view is a rather nice little RISC V development board. Greetings, here I am back again, and I said we would return to GIMP, which is lurking here still in the menu. There it is. And what I thought we'd do is a test comparing how long it takes to launch the program and to apply a filter to an image on both the Mango Pi MQ Pro and a Raspberry Pi Zero W. This, I think, is an interesting test as both boards have a single core one gigahertz processor which is 32-bit ARM on the Pi Zero W and 64-bit RISC-V on the Mango Pi. And we must remember that the Mango Pi I'm using here has got one gigabyte of RAM, whereas the Raspberry Pi Zero W has got 512 megabytes. So let's use the magic of filmmaking to bring both boards up together and launch GIMP at exactly the same moment. There we go, the race is on. And of course, this isn't just a test of processor power and available memory. It'll also depend on things like the speed of the storage system, but it'll still give us an interesting result comparing the performance of these two boards. So let's speed on through. And here we are getting towards the end of the test. Very exciting. Which board's going to win? And yes, it's going to be the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Not by a lot, but it has beaten the Mango Pi MQ Pro. Here, ARM has beaten RISC-V. So, let's now set things up to do our filter test. And I'm going to, for this, create on both machines a new document. And normally I use a document which is the default of 1920 by 1080. But because it'll take a while to apply this filter on these machines, I'm going to use 800 by 600 as our document size. A nice classic resolution, 800 by 600. And there we are, we've now got our document on the Mango Pi MQ Pro. And so we'll now go to Filter up there, and we're going to apply Render and Lava because it's a good filter for tests. It takes quite a while to execute. And once again, we'll put both boards side by side on the screen and start things off at the same moment in time. There we go, the race is on for a second time. And as usual, we'll speed on through till we hit a moment of most excitement. And there we are, the Mango Pi MQ Pro has clearly won the second half of the test. This is a fantastic result for RISC-V versus ARM. 
but we will speed on through to let the Raspberry Pi finish. And there we are. The Raspberry Pi Zero W comes in at 3 minutes 14 seconds, significantly slower than the MQ Pro on 1 minute 23. And I'm sure the extra memory on the MQ Pro was greatly to its advantage here. And I think we've shown that the earlier test was significantly impacted by the speed of the storage system. And overall, I'm very excited by the result of this test. At the very least, it shows us it is now possible to build a RISC-V SPC that can compete with a similar ARM board, at least at the level of a Raspberry Pi Zero. So uh, this, for me, is very much a result to celebrate for RISC-V. The Mango Pi MQ Pro is a great little single board computer for those who want to experiment with RISC. Five. Right now, I've yet to locate a working Python GPIO library for this board, but I'm going to keep searching because I've got a project in mind which will use that connectivity. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.